The ash doesn't stop at borders. It rides the upper atmosphere, carried by winds that circle the Earth. Within days, it begins falling across Europe, Asia, the Middle East. Airports shut down, trade routes freeze, sunlight dims by 10%, then 20%. Plants begin to fail, photosynthesis slows, respiratory illnesses spike, hospitals overflow. By the second week, drinking water becomes contaminated with heavy metals. Crops wither, livestock collapse in their pens. Over 50 million people face food shortages, disease, and infrastructure failure. By the third week, panic becomes chaos, power grids crash, communication lines go dead, martial law is declared in more than 40 countries, borders close, governments reel from the shock, and while the ash continues to fall, something more dangerous spreads. Fear. And this is only the beginning. Even as the ash begins to settle, the real damage is only beginning. Sulfur dioxide, blasted high into the stratosphere, spreads into a thin veil of aerosols that reflect sunlight away from Earth. Global temperatures begin to drop. By the second month, the average temperature has fallen by three degrees Celsius. By the sixth, it falls by five. Crops that survived the initial fallout now fail in the cold. Rain patterns vanish. The monsoons stop. Deserts expand. July brings snow in places that once sweltered. Rivers freeze where they've never frozen before. In the Southern Hemisphere, growing seasons are cut in half. In the North, they vanish entirely. The Earth has entered a new kind of winter, one not defined by season, but by silence and absence. This is not a pause in climate. It's a collapse. A volcanic winter has begun. 